Once upon a time, long forgotten, the Nephilim, an ancient race born from the forbidden union of angels and humans, roamed the earth. These extraordinary beings possessed immense power and wisdom, yet their existence became a threat to the delicate balance between the celestial and mortal realms. It was then that the archangels, guardians of divine law, decided to take action. In those ancient days, when the world was filled with corruption and darkness, there lived a righteous man named Noah. The wickedness of humanity had reached such depths that the Nephilim, the fallen angel-human hybrids, ravaged the earth, spreading chaos and destruction. However, Noah and his family found favor in the eyes of the Almighty, and the archangels were tasked with protecting them amidst the impending onslaught. The archangels were tasked with guarding Noah and his family in the face of the approaching onslaught because they had won the favor of the Almighty. The archangels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel set out on a solemn mission to face the Nephilim and bring harmony to creation, guided by the All-Powerful. The Nephilim possessed skills that were much above those of common mortals, thus the archangels were aware that their task would not be simple. Knowing the archangels' plans, the Nephilim put together a powerful army to defend their race against the assault of the Celestials. The archangels faced a great difficulty as a result of their immense numbers and incredible strength, yet they remained unwavering in their goal. The archangels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel descended from the sky, their brilliant bodies illuminating the night as the Nephilim gathered their armies to destroy the remaining traces of purity on earth. The fact that these celestial beings had been sent by God to protect Noah and his family filled Noah's heart with both amazement and hope as soon as he saw them. The leading archangel was Michael, a powerful fighter. He terrified the Nephilim with his fiery sword and unflinching resolve. As he battled the Nephilim warriors in furious fight, his battle cry resounded across the sky. The air was filled with the clatter of steel and the crackling of celestial force. Michael put on his gleaming armor and pulled his burning sword from its sheath. Standing in the front, prepared to take on the hordes of Nephilim soldiers, his expression exuded power and resolve. He sliced through the enemy ranks with each motion of his blade, striking dread into their hearts and bringing relief to Noah and his family. God's messenger Gabriel raised his trumpet and let out a powerful blast that made the earth tremble and the heavens grow gloomy. His musical voice carried a divine force that sapped the Nephilim's fortitude, clouded their judgment, and sapped their vitality. Gabriel, acting as himself, played his trumpet clearly and with intent. He released a resonant sound with a single note that cut through the confusion and announced the presence of the Almighty. The celestial symphony's disorientation caused the Nephilim to stumble in their advance, and a divine atmosphere of safety and calm subdued their anger. The healer and protector Raphael made use of his extensive knowledge of celestial power. He defeated the Nephilim's defenses by conjuring tremendous spells and unleashing powerful winds with the wave of his palm. They were unable to fight back since Raphael's command caused the forces of nature to submit. Raphael used his angelic abilities to protect Noah and his family as well. They were made invisible to the Nephilim's eyes by a radiant shield he produced with a wave of his palm. His tenderness healed their wounds and lifted their spirits, giving them courage to face hardship. The sage and perceptive archangel Uriel kept a fixed gaze on the combat as it developed. He foresaw the Nephilim's tactics and took advantage of their weaknesses thanks to his divine knowledge. Their leaders were killed by his piercing gaze and lightning-quick actions, which spread anarchy throughout their ranks. And the Archangel Uriel watched the combat with piercing eyes that looked beyond the visible world. His advice helped Noah and his family make their way through the perilous terrain. In the gathering darkness, his presence functioned as a lighthouse, illuminating the righteous road. The combined power and knowledge of the Archangels overcame the Nephilim, who had put up a valiant fight. They dropped one by one, losing strength as their life energy diminished. The celestial god's divine wrath was unmatched by the once powerful Nephilim. The Nephilim's rage grew more intense as time went on, and their desperation led to more violent behavior. But Noah and his family were fiercely defended by the archangels, 
who were endowed with divine might. They engaged in battle with unyielding resolution, the brightness of the heavens emanating from their celestial forms. The archangels maintained their goal throughout the bloody battle. They battled with unwavering tenacity until the final Nephilim warrior fell to their heavenly vengeance. The Nephilim's former home, Earth, finally stood free of their influence. The protection of the archangels was constant throughout the conflict. Their divine protection provided Noah and his loved ones with a haven of tranquility amidst the tumult, protecting them from the unrelenting onslaught of the Nephilim. Noah's family persevered thanks to their unflinching commitment, and they were destined to carry out their function in the divine plan. The archangels looked over the devastation left by the epic fight, their emotions heavy with both joy and grief. They lamented the loss of life since, despite their origins, the Nephilim were a part of creation. They were relieved that both the celestial and human realms had survived, nevertheless. The archangels shielded Noah and his family until the last echoes of the fight died down and the last signs of the Nephilim's presence vanished. Their hearts were overflowing with appreciation for the angelic guardians who had protected them in the face of tremendous odds as they stood in the aftermath. The archangels returned to the heavens after finishing their task and completing their celestial duties. The narrative surrounding the Nephilim and their final fate would serve as a warning, serving as a reminder of the potential repercussions of crossing the line separating the realms. When the world was destroyed by darkness, Noah and his family were left to reconstruct it as the messengers of justice and hope. A tribute to the strength of faith and the unwavering dedication of the celestial beings, the tale of their survival and the protection of the archangels would go down in history for all time. Let me now briefly summarize the events leading up to the War of the Angels. A terrifying narrative of what happened to the Nephilim, the progeny of angels and human women, can be found in the Old Book of Enoch. These creatures, according to the tale, grew to be enormous giants with tremendous powers, but their deeds grew more and more evil and depraved. They chose a bad road because of their conceit and unquenchable desire for power, and they would receive harsh punishment. The Nephilim sojourn on earth turned into an insult to the divine order as they took pleasure in their depravity. God became aware of the evil that had crept into humanity when the cries of the oppressed reached the sky. He made the decision to stop the Nephilim's reign of terror and bring the world back into balance out of his wisdom and righteousness. Although the Nephilim had enormous strength and towering stature, their most infamous trait was an insatiable appetite. The hunger of the Nephilim increased along with their population. They had an unquenchable need for more, and were always looking for more. They had an insatiable desire, and as the world's population grew, so did their hunger. The only thing they left behind was arid wasteland as they consumed everything in their path, eating enormous amounts of food. However, as their appetite increased, so did their desperation. The land was no longer able to feed their ravenous appetites with enough food. They went to other Nephilim and began to hunt them down in a revolting act of cannibalism. As the Nephilim grew violent, brothers turned against brothers, and families were split apart. Darkness engulfed the country as the Nephilim satiated their cannibalistic urges. The earth shook beneath their feet, and the skies were forever enveloped in storm clouds. As the Nephilim feasted on one another carelessly, the smell of blood and decay filled the air. Shuring the flood that took them away, the Ark of Noah floated safely above the mayhem as the waters rose and the Nephilim continued their cannibalistic rampage. The land was submerged by the floodwaters, which drowned the wicked and rid the earth of their abhorrent presence. The Nephilim perished in the murky depths due to their insatiable appetite. When the waters of the deluge finally subsided and Noah and his family left the Ark, they saw a world that had been reborn. Once more, the countryside was lush and green, and a calmness descended across the planet. The Nephilim, with their ravenous appetite, had vanished from history, serving as a warning against the results of unbridled desire. You see, God gave Enoch, a righteous man he picked, divine wisdom and understanding of the approaching judgment. He was tasked with conveying a message of caution about the approaching punishment to the fallen angels who had produced the Nephilim. 
Enoch entered the world of these fallen beings, called the Watchers, and brought the news of God's judgment and vengeance. The Nephilim were terrified when they realized they were going to die. They understood that their pride and immorality had brought them to this situation, and that they would not be able to evade divine justice. Their once powerful forms trembled in fear as panic engulfed their spirits. A significant cataclysmic disaster shook the world as the judgment took place. The Nephilim were frightened to death, as magical powers tore their bodies apart. Their massive bodies were torn apart limb by limb, and their spirits were split from their corporeal selves. This mutilation served as a metaphor for robbing them of their authority, and reduced them to nothing more than evil spirits. These ghostly beings, formerly known as the Nephilim, evolved into what are now known as malevolent spirits, or demons. They were destined to travel the planet, tortured for all time, searching for ways to manipulate and deceive people. Having lost their physical bodies and being overwhelmed by their evil impulses, they sought to cause anguish to those who were still alive. Thank you for your support.